二零二二年，美国抽象女性艺术家林恩·特雷克斯勒的早期作品迎来市场爆点。从画廊展览到拍卖私洽，他的画作以五到七位数的价格被抢购一空。一级市场的等待名单更是长达百位。但大多数人不知道的是，当一位艺术家某个时期的画作价格不断飞涨，一画难求时，市场自然会将目光投向这位画家其他时期的作品。如能把握时机，先于他人发掘还未被广泛关注的精品，将会在日后收获丰厚回报。本期视频带你走进林恩·特雷克斯勒独家代理画廊 Barry Campbell Gallery， 优先预览两件值得投资的震撼佳作。Christine, you are an expert in post-war American abstract expressionism. You and your partner Martha Campbell discovered this remarkable artist, Lynn Drexler, many years ago, and you exclusively represent this artist. Lynn Drexler shaked the market in 2022. Can you tell us more about it? Thank you so much for being here. Yes, you're right. Our specialty at this gallery is post-war art. So after 1945, and we have a specialty with women artists. So Lynn Drexler absolutely falls into this category. It seems to me the world was turned on to Lynn Drexler about a year ago. It was just a year ago.、Uh, Martha and I had been selling her work about. 15 to 20 years ago, and we're so glad that this market has sort of exploded. But it was slowly churning over time. So while we see it that a big auction happened and a record hit a million dollars, there was really things that were making that market build. For example, she had an exhibition in 2008 in Monhegan Island in Maine, and it traveled to Portland. So she was known as a Maine artist. And at that time, other dealers were starting to sell her artwork, so people were getting to see it. And I would say, a year before the big auction record, there was a smaller painting that came up at auction, and it went for four times the estimate—not 25 times、mm -hmm. the estimate, but four times the estimate. So you could see that there was interest, and it was brewing. And then by March of last year, this is when a painting sold—a masterpiece of a painting sold—and it went for 1.2 million dollars. So we are pleased to be part of this exciting time for Lynn Drexler. Exactly. This. Auction records really offered an evident sign of how hot the private market has become for female abstract expressionists, especially for Drexler. We know this is still only at the very beginning of what it could do for this artist. I agree with you. I think things are just starting to turn. So we did an exhibition, a joint exhibition with Minuchin Gallery last November and December. And we sold out that show in a minute, very quickly.、Um, and this show was examining her early work from 1959 to 1969. But Lynn Drexler painted her entire life. She was a wonderful artist throughout all periods. And so I think now we are starting to look beyond just this one time and look to the other paintings that she was making. So today we are here to admire two of the most beautiful examples of Lynn Drexler's later works. I want to know what makes the work so special from this period. What I think is wonderful about this period of Drexler's work is when we look at her early works from the '60s, we're talking about the thickly painted textures, the patterning. This continues throughout her whole life. In the '60s, was living in New York, but by 1980, she moved to a small island. On the coast of Maine, so a very remote island, but a very important island. It's an artist community on Monhegan Island. She moved there full time in the 1980s, and she moved from painting in an abstract manner to a more representational manner. So these are still lifes. She was doing a lot of still lifes at this time. She also did seascapes at the time. But these are wonderful examples that carry the tradition of what she was doing in her earlier years. And I just keep looking at this pattern in here. It's just—it's taking it a step further than what she was doing in the 1960s. They're very beautiful. She was looking at nature. She was looking out her window. This is her house in Maine, and she did a lot of、uh, paintings that were looking out onto the landscape, to the seascape. I think what's really marvelous about these paintings, and I wish everyone could see these up close like we can, because there's so much more than just what you're seeing as the outline here. There's some beautiful darker purple lines here. There's a very thick layering of paint. You can almost see it like frosting on a cake.、Um, particularly here too, these sort of 
patterning and pointillist patterning. And we do think of post-impressionist artists like Seurat or Bonnard. So it's really interesting to me whether or not she was looking at art from this time. Other people talk about Van Gogh, that there's a connection with the way the lines and the swirly lines. I also think there's more study to be done with the pattern and decoration movement that we know was happening in the 1970s. She made a lot of textiles. Mm -hmm. She would weave fabrics, make pillows and quilts. So a lot of this, this sort of movement and geometry is coming out of this idea, I think, of textile. The market for Ling Drexler's work exploded in 2022. Collectors are lining up to acquire a piece by this artist. I believe her huge success is not groundless. This is the artist who studied with the most important masters of her time, including Hans Hoffmann and Robert Motherwell. She showed with the Kooning and Alex Katz and other outstanding male artists of her era, earned her first solo exhibition at the Tanager Gallery back in 1961. What I love about these particular paintings also is there's such a joy in these works. She always threw herself into her paintings. Her life was a little turbulent at times. And so I think we can see in her paintings, this is where she really found peace and joy and really threw herself in. And that's where you see all of this patterning and this beautiful flower still lifes. And there's more, and you have seen more paintings of her from this time period, but there's a wonderful body of work. And I think it's time to re-examine these. And you'll see at auction houses, at other galleries, there's more shows happening. There's more works coming up for sale. That's because there's more of a demand for it. This is good. We want things to come up so people have a chance to see more and the opportunity to buy more. And we'll be doing shows ourselves. We plan to do a show of this period, um, hopefully in the next year or so. For her large and rare canvases from the 1950s and 60s, which can be sold for over half a million dollars, the works from this period offer a really good opportunity for collectors because they have not yet received extensive attention. And the price is not unattainable in comparison with her early price. And the market for this particular period is about to rise. I can see it's coming around the corner. 那我们今天的画廊私访就先到这里。如果你想要收藏视频中介绍的作品，可以在视频下方找到我们的联系方式。如果你喜欢本期的视频，别忘了点赞、评论、收藏、转发。我们下期见啦！